And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. This is a channel where we talk about anything related to comic books, like new releases, stories, writers, artists, or TV shows based on comic books. In today's video, I am going to show you the Ben Reilly Spider-Man trade paperback. And just to be clear, in this video, I'm not going to talk about the whole story and everything that's happening. I'm just going to show you the trade paperback and talk about the plot, but without spoilers. So, with no further ado, let's start. So, here I have my copy of the Ben Reilly Spider-Man trade paperback. And this is a wonderful cover with Ben Reilly web swinging, drawn by uh, Steve Scross and Dave Stewart. Their names are also here. And since we mentioned this too, let's take a look at the others. So, J.M. Demadeus writes the story, and this may be surprising for, for you, because he used to write Spider-Man stories back in the 80s and 90s, so yeah, it's sure is surprising to see him again. But trust me, he, he, still, got, he still got it. He is still the great writer. Uh, David Baldeon is the artist in, in this limited series, while the colorist is Israel Sil Silva. Uh, the, the letterer is the well-known Joe Caramagna. And if you're wondering what VC means, it's virtual calligraphy, because uh, lettering isn't done as it used to. They don't write everything by hand. They type the words in the computer and add the buttons and all the stuff. Uh, in their computers. Some of the names we mentioned are, are also here. Oh, and I forgot, you may know uh, J.M. Demarais by uh, Spider-Man Craven's Last Hunt. I think this is the most famous story he ever wrote. Let's take a quick look at the spine. Of course, here's the title, the Marvel logo. Uh, the same names that are also in the cover, and this is a panel from an issue of this series. And here we have the back cover. So as we can see from down here, this volume collects Ben Reilly, Spider-Man 1 through 5. And if you're wondering if there are any more issues, no there aren't. This was a limited series and there are only 5, though I do hope that we may get more in the future. This was really fun to read and it was really nice to see Ben as a hero again after all the events uh, with Dark Web. I miss old Ben. Anyways, there's really nothing I can say to accurately describe just how gorgeous Baldion's art is. And yes, it's, it's, it's awesome. Just take a look at this. David Baldeon is awesome, and I'm wondering how, how didn't I know him early, uh, before? Journey back in time to another sensational era of Spidey storytelling. And if you look here, it says, in the proud tradition of Simulate Spider-Man. If you're wondering why it says it, it's because Simulate Spider-Man was another limited series that was set in the past, like this one. Uh, Simi Spider-Man was set between the Secret Wars, actually it was after the Secret Wars, but before Spidey realized that his suit was alive. Yeah, anyways, that's irrelevant, so let's not get into it. So yes, that's why it says it says that it's 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 in the same style as, as the other one, it's it's like a prequel. Here we have uh, uh, the plot, which we will talk about later, and now let's take a look at how it looks inside. First of all, we have an, uh, an advertisement about the Amazing Spider-Man Beyond volumes. I do not recommend. It, it's not good. I've read. I've read the whole thing. It's not. It's. It's just not good. It also features Ben Riley, but uh, 
it it sold events before dark web and if you have what's my dark web video then you know that dark web is bad so all the events that led to dark web are also bad yeah i do not recommend and here we have an um, advertisement for symbiote spider-man which i recommend this, this was actually very nice uh all the, all uh, there were there are four symbiote spider-man limited series that all have uh a separate trade paperback the three this three were really nice uh, symbiote spider-man alien reality and crossroads in king in black it wasn't very good to be honest but in general in general this series is also very nice all right you may give it a try if you, if you want. I may talk about this in a different video. So where were, where were we? Ah, yes. I love this. And this. I, I really like how, how everything is structured here. As I said before, this is the creative team and these are the rest of the people who helped um, to make this edition. And here the story starts, we have the cover of the first issue, and in the end, in the very last three pages, we have some extras. These are some alternate uh, poster, some alternate covers, I meant actually variant covers. Yeah, I'm really glad that they didn't use the suit for Ben. They did use it, but not for Ben. I don't like the suit. There are some epic covers here that I really hope were used. Uh, for example, the uh, this one is amazing, uh, or this one, this do well. This is a great cover. The rest of the covers here are well. Uh, they're not so good. For example, take a look at this one. Why does Scorpion look like this? And I forgot to mention that. This is the image used here. Or or here, for example, the faces look very, very weird. And it's, it's, I think that here they're supposed to be weird, but in general, they, I really don't like how Steve's cross does faces. They're, they don't look, they, they don't look good. Okay, now let's talk about the story. Some of the covers, not all, some of the covers are not very good, but the story sure is very enjoyable. The story starts with Ben Riley basically recapping everything that has ever happened to him. Uh, so this is basically the whole clone saga which I have read, and I can confirm that it's very confusing. So, long story short, Spider-Man gets cloned, the clone is presumed to be dead, after five years the clone returns, then it is revealed that the clone is actually the real Peter Parker, and the person that thought was the real Peter Parker is clone, then Peter Parker uh, leaves and stops being Spider-Man, while Ben Riley uh, takes the mantle, and makes a new suit so that he is not the same. And yeah, well, that's basically everything that has happened before the events of the story. After that, more confusing things happened, but well, let's just not talk about that. Maybe leave that for another video, maybe? Yeah. Uh, and this, th this is just wonderful. This whole page is is amazing. I just love David Baldeon's art. So 
So in the first issue, uh, Spidey fights Carrion, who is a villain that we don't really get to see nowadays. He was more like a 90s villain. He uh, he was also in Carnage's team uh, during the Maximum Carnage event. And in the end of the first issue, Scorpion visits, yeah, visits Spider-Man and tells him that he knows his real identity. So in the next issue, they fight. And I really like the fight here. It's it's epic. It's really well drawn. Everything is very well drawn. And then Ben tries to kind of figure out who sent Scorpion and why he, uh, they sent Scorpion after him. But he can't really find a good explanation. Then more, more villains uh, come. And for uh, all those of you who want to find out more about the story, well, I'm gonna tell you, but all the others that don't want to get spoiled, please go to the next chapter. So, who is behind all these attacks? Well, none other but Spider Side. Yeah, that's right. The villain that everyone forgot. The another failed clone of Peter Parker because we just can't get enough of those clones. This is a very nice trade paperback. The the cover and the back cover is awesome. It's it has this very nice kind of thick paper and very glossy. And I like it when uh, comic books are made that way. Uh, this a thick cover and the rest of the pages are thinner. It's really well structured. It has some pretty nice extras. And as far as the story is concerned, well, it's absolutely amazing. Okay, I'll be honest, it is not the best story I have read, but it truly is very entertaining. It has plenty of action, and we can, and getting to see inside the mind of Ben Riley is awesome. I really like all those things. And honestly, when I finished reading this, I wanted more. Like, why should it be just a limited series, and why can't they make it an ongoing series? Wouldn't that be awesome? Imagine it. Ben Riley, Spider-Man. After all the things that happened, with, that happened with Dark Web, I think that we really need an ongoing series with Ben Riley as a hero that is set in the past. It's a nice reminder to what Ben Riley really is about and that he can actually and that he can be Spider-Man too and not just uh, Cosmo come on Cosmo I hate that guy so, and I really like that they bring back many of uh, Ben's villains and in this limited series Ben uh, generally has to deal with many stuff that we didn't see him deal with in uh, the original run, uh, the sensational Spider-Man, back in the 90s when he was Spider-Man for a while. And the only thing that I don't like is the fact that it's a prequel. So whatever happens in this story has absolutely no impact in the present. Because... When you when you make a story that is set in the past, you need to make sure that nothing changes. For example, no character can die, because if they die, then why do they exist today in the present stories? In the st I mean, in the stories set in the present. So that's the only bad thing with 
uh, stories that are said in the past, but in this one, they handled it, they handled everything very well, but I won't give you uh, too many details because I don't want you to get spoiled, so do I recommend this volume? Yes, I do. It may not be the best story, the best Ben Riley story, but it, but it's still great, and I think it's really worth reading. So I highly recommend getting it, and if you like this one, then I highly recommend Spider-Man: The Lost Hunt. Uh, the story is brand new. Uh, it's a limited series with five issues, and the last issue was published just a few weeks ago. So it's not available in collect edition format yet, but you can still check out the single issues. Uh, the story is set uh, during the same time as this one, uh, while Ben Riley is in New York doing all this crazy stuff. Peter Parker, uh, with a pregnant Mary Jane, is in Portland, and they have to deal with... Well, I won't tell you anything, so that you can read it yourself, but just know that J.M. Dematteis also wrote this one. Anyways, if I had to rate this collection edition, then I would give it a 3.5 or 4 out of 5. No, 3.5 is good. 3.5. Very good story. Has its drawbacks, but it's still worth reading. Well guys, this was today's video. I hope you found it useful and if you really liked it, then you can support me by subscribing, clicking the like button and allowing call notifications. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to talk about the whole story of Ben Riley's Spider-Man. So, until the next time, goodbye true believers!